So, it's Pi Day, which naturally means a lot of gremlins coming out of the woodwork to talk about how Tau is so much better and we should all stop using Pi immediately. Their strongest argument for this is that when using the radiance system of angle measurement, Pi introduces an awkward factor of 2 everywhere, while Tau represents a nice full circumference, and every angle in the unit circle is just the fraction of the circumference times Tau. There is now less to memorize, it is easier to learn, and after all, the circle is defined in terms of the radius, so surely it's more natural to use the ratio of the circumference to the radius than to the diameter, right? Well, I'm not convinced. Pi can just as well be interpreted as the ratio of the semi-circumference to the radius. But why would you even want to use the semi-circumference to begin with? Well, I'll tell you why. It allows you to leverage symmetry. Since pi naturally describes the top half of the circle, an angle between 0 and pi is nicely described as its fraction of the semi-circumference times pi. I don't think you can raise any objections to that. Try doing this with tau though, and you'll end up with awkward factors of 1 half everywhere. But what about the other angles? Well, that's pretty simple. Just go clockwise. Allow yourself to introduce negative angles. If we do that, notice that these angles down here look pretty much just like these angles up here. If you use tau, you either keep the awkward factor of 1 half, or if you stick to going counterclockwise the whole way, there are either more fractions to memorize or more work to do when spinning the unit circle around in your head. By using pi and leveraging symmetry, you can cut down the work in half. Not only that, you also make it clearer what's going on with the negative angles. They seem less like weird artifacts, and more like natural things to think about. And in my memories of learning trigonometry, dealing with negative angles was actually trickier to wrap my head around than dealing with an extra factor of 2, which is probably why no one even brings up negative angles when talking about pi versus tau. Tau makes no attempt to nicely describe negative angles, but with pi, it can be done. I mean, why should counterclockwise turns be given all the attention anyway? In fairness, I did find one example of a Taoist attempting to justify this. So we define angles counterclockwise, so we go that way rather than that way. Quite why we do that, I have no idea. It's convention. Now, I know what you're thinking. That's not nice at all. We should be making an effort to avoid negative numbers. Not to mention that it seems more natural to just go all around the circle one way than to go this way for this half and this other way for this half, but hear me out. By using negative numbers, you allow yourself to use the symmetry of the circular functions, in particular the evenness of cosine and the oddness of sine. And while this method of traveling around the unit circle does seem kind of weird, it actually tells us something. It connects to the wildly underrated rational parametrization of the unit circle. See, the way that parametrization works is that you draw a line from this point to some other point on the circle, and then the parameter is the y-coordinate where that line meets the y-axis. When that parameter is positive, you get the top half of the circle. When it's zero, you get the traditional starting point when using radians. And when it's negative, you get the bottom half of the circle. The rational parametrization of the circle connects to the transcendental one using these double angle identities, which may be expressed like this. In this form, letting t be any real number automatically yields the period of the sine and cosine functions from negative pi to pi. For me, this is especially important, as this is actually how I like to define the circular functions. Given that this is the circle constant, it seems more important to make connections with other circle-related things rather than, I don't know, parabolic motion? So now that the strongest argument in favor of tau can be safely thrown away, all that's left is some stuff about how tau makes some, not all, just some, formulas look nicer. And if that's all you've got left, I don't think it's even worth the effort to keep arguing. That's all I have to say about that.